as we continue this transition. Um, in the meantime, what we would like to do is really just start off uh, making sure that anyone who didn't get a chance to sign in, um, over by Joanne, there is a sign-in sheet just so that we're aware of, of who we were able to get information to in person and who we may need to follow up with. Um, in addition, uh, there are copies of the presentation. If you need a copy and you weren't able to get one today, we will also have them available at City Hall. We will uh, at the DAC, the Administrative Center, and we will also have them available online on the front page of our website. There is a button that says Retiree Healthcare where we are trying to put all of the resources for you and your family. Um, we will continue to update those over the next several weeks. Um, so what we're going to do today is cover uh, the Medicare uh, changes. So these are for uh, retirees that are over 65. We're going to work our way uh, through those questions that we have today. I have John Kowalski here from Menquin Vance. Um, he will be providing you some information, and then I will be chiming in with some additional information um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Are you ready, John? Yeah. Yeah. Want to go full screen? No. Okay. So, um, as John's finishing up, as a reminder, um, the uh, Medicare program, um, we are actually the secondary payer. We are the secondary payer, meaning that we cover the gap that Medicare doesn't cover. So what we're talking about here is that gap insurance today. Are you ready, John? We are. Okay, with that, John Kowalski, go ahead and take it away, and we'll try to get folks out of here as soon as possible. Perfect. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Um, we appreciate this opportunity to help answer. All right, how's that? A little better? Perfect. Um, my name is John Kowalski. I work with Mink Vance, the benefit consultant with the city. And uh, I wanted to thank you all for coming out, taking the time today to let us give you a little more information about the healthcare oh, changes that will yeah. be going into effect in January. Today we'll be talking about the, the differences in the plans, um, the health reimbursement account that you will be receiving, the health advocate program that's being put into place uh, by the city to help make answering questions a little easier for everyone. Uh, that's a, a program that you'll be able to access via the telephone that you call in and uh, they will have individual conversations to handle everyone's questions. Um, John, I'm gonna have you like actually sh just project a little bit more. Sure. This building is sucks the summer. Got it. The mic kind of keeps falling down on me a little bit, so it, it, it's moving away uh, here and there. But just stop me. If, if I start getting too quiet, let me know, and I will get louder. So the, this particular change in benefits is going to be going into effect January 1st of 2023. Your carriers, whether you have Blue Cross or HAP currently, will not change. Those, those options are both, both up, they're available to you. The health reimbursement account will be a debit card that will come to you preloaded with an amount to help cover your deductible for the plan year. And you'll use that like any other debit card for your out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, health Advocate is it's an assistance program in that it, it gives you a line to call into to ask any questions about how the plans work, what the benefits are, uh, if you have claims issues with your providers, with billing, you can call them and they can help to walk you through that. Yes, sir? I'm sorry, I'm not trying to interrupt, but as you're going down this list, I guess, can we ask questions at that time, or what do you, how do you want to do it? 
You know what, that's, that's perfect. We can take questions as they come up. Um, I know with, with myself, if I have a question and I don't write it down or ask it right away, I'm gonna forget to ask it at some point, so I think that's probably the best approach. And my first question is, who is P&A? So P&A is, is just um, an administrator. They currently handle the FSAs for the active employees. And this is just another service that they'll be handling. Um, the, the reimbursement accounts uh, and the debit cards. It's it's purely an administrator. But is PA uh, that's that's just what they go by. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the the actual full term for it. But that's when when we when we talk to them and their their email, everything is PNA. Eric, it's literally just p &A Group. All you'll see when you get your card in the mail, it's the exact same card here. Um, you guys can, you know, if you want mine, you can pass it around. It's the exact same card that active employees have. So you'll get your card in the mail. It'll say p &A Group on it. Don't throw it out. <laughs> it's a card. It looks just like a MasterCard. It looks exactly like a credit card. Um, this will have preloaded onto it um, you'll have uh, two years worth of your deductible. So $500 will be preloaded onto this card for you to use um, when you are at the doctor's and you have those co-pays um, or core insurance costs. So if you're like me, when I go to the doctor, I give them my insurance card, I give them my ID. At the same time, I usually just slide my card across and tell them to just take care of it and let me know uh, what the balances are. Um, you'll be able to work through that with uh, your doctors, your individual doctors. Um, they'll help you through that process. But that's what you'll see in the mail. Just like that. Say again one more time, Paul. Are you, are you the same? Are you on the same? Yeah, both of us are on the same insurance. Okay, that's a great question. So um, you can request a second card if you want to. Um, my husband and I share this card. Yeah. Are you over 65 in the Medicare or the pre-65 group? Well, thank you for asking. Can you repeat the question? So I, there, there's a reason I'm asking, and it's not to be impolite because my grandma would go ahead and tick my ear if, if I were asking people's ages, but there's a reason. The question is whether you have, um, uh, if you are two people over 65, um, how much will be loaded onto the card. Um, the over 65, the deductible is per individual. So in Paula's case, for Paula, she will get two years. So that's $500 for Paula. And then, she, may I use Doug as an example, Paula? And then she will also get two years worth of deductible or another $500 for Doug. So in totality, $1,000 would be loaded onto this card in Paula's case. Yes, so the card that you will receive, and you don't don't get rid of this card. The card that you receive will be two years worth of deductible, so keep this card, okay? And you will receive 500 as an individual for two years. Uh, Ma'am, yes, please. I'm married, so the question is, I'm out of town, this card. Yes, yeah, so you can absolutely, uh, there is, when you receive your card in the mail, um, if you've received a credit card before, there's a 1-800 number there. You can go and you can call and they'll send you a second card. Um, that's what we do. Um, my husband loses cards, so I keep this one. Um, and um, actually, for those of you that want to add it, for whatever reason, to your Apple wallet, that's what he does. Um, my husband and I do that right now, yes. This is an online option where you can see. Um, what I find easier for our family is we get a quarterly statement, paper statement, that's what we have opted into. But you can do either. Um, just go ahead, ma'am, and we'll get this one and I'll come right to the back. Okay. 
Yes, I, I please let me uh, apologize. So yes, it includes both HAP and Blue Cross Blue Shield. It doesn't matter what your provider is, you will still receive this card. Ma'am, and then I have to go over to this corner. Yeah, go ahead. after the second year. So starting in the third year, uh, you will actually be able to, um, you will not receive this card. That will give us some time to set up a program where you will actually receive 50% um, reimbursement on that deductible back from the city. So uh, we will be able to, you know, whatever qualifying expense that you may have, so $250, um, we will reimburse back 125 of that directly from the city. You will provide uh, documentation. And what we'll do, um, that is three years out, well in advance, we will work through a process that we hope will be uh, as um, uh, approachable and, and try to make sure that it's as seamless as we can for you. Can I go over here, please, uh, ma'am, standing in the back? The Philippines, where else? Where is it located? <laughs> PNA is an American company, and it is located here in the United States. I'm not sure I understand your question. What I would suggest, though, is if there is a 1-800 number here where you can absolutely get support. But as John was going through, there is a health advocate program that gives you one phone number that actually can act as a support between you and your providers if you need that support as well. We have two options. So health advocate is, again, they're, they're based in the United States as well, but they have offices all over the place. Um, I can't tell you exactly where, if you call into their 1-800 number, uh, where physically the person who picks it up will be, but they will be able to help answer your questions. Um, like I said, I don't know where all of their physical offices are. There was another question in the back. Yes, ma'am. The money is yours. So the card is simply access to an account that has the money in there for you. Um, it'll it'll stay on the card. The card will work until there's no money left. Um, I saw a hand uh, right here, sir. Say you have a couple. One's pre Medicare. Do they get separate cards? Is it separate five hundred dollars? Um, the cards are per um, enrollee is the way we have it set up right now. Um, so if you have one person that is Medicare and one person that's pre, and they're in two different areas, you would get two cards loaded with the different deductible amounts. The, the pre-Medicare, that we have a separate presentation for pre-Medicare individuals, but because those are not the same plan, uh, obviously, as a Medicare option is. Okay. Sir, and then I'll jump to this table. Yeah, you said this card's good for five hundred dollars for two years, so it's two fifty a year. Mm -hmm. Originally, when they talked, they were talking two thousand dollars deductible. Week. What happened to that? So that's a, a very different option. That the two thousand dollars deductible plan isn't going into place for the active employees. That's not something that's being put into place for the retirees. But that's what they told us. I, I'm, I'm, be, uh, I'm not sure, um, I'm going to be 100% clear, the $2,000 deductible plan is for active employees. There is no option for either the Medicare or the pre-65 retirees that includes a deductible that high. A deductible, to be clear, and I want to make sure that we're not speaking past each other, a deductible is an amount of money that you pay out of pocket that then following satisfying that amount of money, your benefits then start to kick in and cover at the higher level. Are you talking about an out-of-pocket maximum? That is the different animal. Well, between me and you, ma'am, I ain't got a clue. Because I went through the information you sent me, and I see documents for, or let me pull it out and read it to you, because I don't know.
So let's. Um, so John, let's so, start here. Yeah. So we'll we put up the uh, a very high level summary of the the plans on the screen here, um, and the the first thing to note is that preventive care, as it's covered today and will be covered under the new plan, is covered at 100 percent before deductible. So when you go in for your physicals. Uh, your flu shots, those things are covered without any out-of-pocket expense for you. What about meal plans and blood draws? Uh, those are, well, the blood draws could be for various things, as, as long as they're for preventive tests, uh, that qualifies under the uh, ACA as preventive services. And your mammogram, uh, your regularly scheduled mammograms are preventive services as well. Uh, the question was on the third year, what if you move out of state? Um, so whether you live in state or out of state, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, it would be the same process um, uh, in the third year. Um, we would have you go ahead and submit that documentation and we would send you a check. No, to, to the city of Dearborn. To be 100% clear, this is all the city of Dearborn. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you absolutely sure will, sir. So 
you'll you'll satisfy that and, and reach the thousand dollars. So now you're at twelve fifty out of pocket. The after the coinsurance maximum has been met, the only way that you reach this out of pocket max, this one line up from the bottom here of six thousand dollars, would be with copays. So your fifteen thousand dollar surgery would not cost you more than twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Sir, yes, I'm sorry, sir. It's not. So the six thousand dollar annual out of pocket maximum on the plan uh, pertains to any costs that you experience out of pocket for deductible, coinsurance, or copays under the plan benefits. Can you repeat the question? So the the question was. Uh, since you pay into so, uh, Social Security and, and other taxes and things that are, are a part of Medicare, uh, does any of that count towards your out-of-pocket maximum? And the, the answer to that is, is no. The out-of-pocket max is strictly met by deductible, coinsurance dollars, and copays. Uh, copays such as your office visit copay, your prescription drug copays. So just to, just to uh, clarify, let's say somebody has Correct. Uh, you'd never be out of pocket more than $6,000. However, if you had three surgeries in the same year, uh, as soon as you met your, your $1,000 coinsurance max after deductible, uh, which would be $1,250 total deductible coinsurance out of pocket, uh, your, your plan uh, would be limited to the copays only, and you won't have copays at the hospital, meaning that second, third surgery would have no cost to you. Okay, so once, uh, that's a great question. So the question is, um, at the end of the two years, um, does, and, and there's money left on, on your card, but do you have the ability to use that? Um, yes, so once the money is on the card, it is your money, as long as you use it for eligible expenses, so anything healthcare related, so I kind of went through, you know, my son's braces. So you know, it's yours, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Once the money's on the card, it's in a bank account, essentially in your name, and you will have, have access for any qualified expenses. It, it, it could last. It's, it'll last until it until you've exhausted the funds. I'm having trouble understanding the distinction between coinsurance and copays. In other words, if you if you pay twenty percent as part of coinsurance. Isn't that essentially a copay? I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, I, I can't follow the distinction here. And what I'm thinking is that maybe they're gonna, once you reach your co-insurance maximum, that with this plan, you're gonna pay all the bills as a copay till it reaches 6,000. Okay, so that's actually a great question. That's so. my concern that you're okay. gonna, in other words, you're gonna put prop payment up front in other words, you're going to be hit for six thousand dollars. You're not after um, the coinsurance runs. Let out, me try to explain you know, before it before, the, before you... the insurance will pay anything. In other words, it's the same as these uh, uh, high deductible plans. They that is not how this plan will work. Words, so I'd like, to, I'd like to clarify it for you before you. But just one second. You pay have a high deductible plan, so you pay ten thousand up front for every, all your bills. Then insurance kicks in. Is that what this is going to be like? That's no. nothing like that at all. Nope. Okay, so so I, I'll explain it for so you. So how 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 would it go, go 
higher than 1,250 using copays. I mean, what a co what is the distinction, and how and I mean, how would you run up uh, uh, what 40, 40, 750 in copays? How what's the logic of that? How does that work? So here's here's how it works. You have. We'll give the example of a fifteen thousand dollars right. surgery one more time, and I'll add happen. in a few other expenses to help make this a little more clear. You have a fifteen thousand dollars surgery on January first. Okay. You pay two hundred and fifty dollars of your deductible and the thousand dollar coinsurance max because it's you've got more than five thousand dollars more of claims. Twenty percent takes that to a thousand. Now you're at twelve fifty out of pocket. The only other cost that you will have for the remainder of the calendar year would come from copays, meaning going to the doctor for $10 every visit, uh, going to an urgent care for $25 per visit. The likelihood of you reaching a $6,000 out-of-pocket maximum for the year is extremely unlikely, as it would take somewhere to the tune of 400 office visits for you to get there. Now, when I go to the doctor now and I get the statement, you know, it says that, you know, the they charge $300. Blue Cross accepts $100. In other words, so as part of a, a, a copay, I would have to pay that $100 then, right? No. no. Your office visit copay under this plan is $10. Okay, so I have so to pay So you'll go $10. and you'll, you'll see your physician, and before you leave, you'll pay them $10. Okay, so the rate that, would, that exists would be the Blue Cross approved rate. That's simply what the doctor's being paid. That they, that they approve, only I would pay only $10 of that, Blue Cross would pay $90. So, is that right? We're, we're digging into claims here. It's, it, that's where it starts to get a bit confusing because your explanation of benefits will show the amount that your physician billed to the insurance company, right. in our example, Blue Cross. Blue Cross will have an approved payment amount to that provider. Right. You will pay your copay regardless of the Blue Cross amount. Blue Cross pays the, the provider their contracted amount that they're going to pay for services rendered. And the provider has agreed under their Blue Cross contract to accept that amount as payment. Okay, so uh, you're, you're saying from a practical point of view, that's probably almost never going to happen. I, reaching I, $6,000 on court. Correct. Reaching $6,000 is, is almost never going to happen. Okay, because so, I thought... The way I interpreted it is it was going to be the co-pays were going to be paid up front, like a high deductible. Plan. No, it's nothing like a nothing like a qualified high deductible health plan. Now, the, those the way that you're trying to explain it is how the active plan works, but we we don't need to get into how that plan works today. It's it's so different from the plans that are being offered to you that uh, it's it's not worth discussing. Kim, um, I have three related questions. Three questions. So coinsurance is not per incident. That that coinsurance maximum is an annual coinsurance maximum. The one thousand, yes. And it's so. Let's use a smaller example than the fifteen thousand dollars surgery. Say you have a one thousand dollar procedure done. You'll pay the two fifty, and then twenty percent of the remaining seven hundred and fifty dollars. So that'll be under a thousand dollars you'll still have a bit of that maximum left to pay if you have another procedure, but you won't pay the entire 750, you'll pay 20% of it. And is the, the $1,000 and the $6,000, those are per person? So if there's two people. That is correct. So two people, it's $1,200. Two of them, $6,000. Yes, it's, for Medicare Advantage plans, everything is based on per individual. So it's, it does make the understanding as a, as a married couple a little bit more complicated because you, you're looking at it, not, as you should, right? as your, your family expense could be up to $12,000. Now, as we've established, it, that's very unlikely. You'd have to have many, many, many prescriptions and many office visits and things like that to ever reach that full amount. But I would say you're more realistic uh, out-of-pocket costs could go up to, for two people, uh, 500 in deductible and then 2,000 in coinsurance max, so $2,500 for a, a married couple. So if I have a required surgery, okay, and I'm on Medicare, is the coinsurance 20% after what Medicare pays? 
So, a Medicare Advantage plan is simply that you have a health insurance company, Blue Cross or HAP, is administering Medicare on the government's behalf. So, it actually improves the Medicare benefits uh, in general, where you'll pay based on this schedule of benefits, um, rather than just purely having uh, Medicare on its own through the government. So I think what the question is, so um, I think if I'm understanding your question, um, you have to have a surgery um, to repair a heart issue. I'm not, you know, not, not bringing that down, just saying we'll grab that. That would be mandatory. That's right, yes ma'am. Um, so you're, you, have a his, you have a surgery for a heart issue. Um, Medicare, uh, your Medicare benefits um, are, are, are part of the equation here. And so Medicare is the first payer, and then the remainder would come here. Um, but what John is saying is because you're under a Medicare Advantage plan, we've simplified things for you um, uh, a little bit because it's the same provider. Did I get close, John? Yes. So. To the cap of a thousand dollars of the building loans, or uh, yes, it's up. Uh, so, get, getting into claims again, how this works is the provider will bill, send the bill through the, the insurance, right, and it'll be discounted, and then to an approved amount. Then you factor in the, the way that your payment structure is with your deductible and co-insurance up to the limits and co-pays. And that is, so that is how you'll, you'll pay based on. So if, so another follow-up question. It's not what they're going to charge. It's what Medicare is going to approve. Uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, so is the co-pay based on what is billed or what the contracted rate right. is? That is a group that's... It's, it's, so this is where we're going to fall into the claims whirlpool? Yes. Okay. So, so. it's... You're, you're going to be billed based on the, the percentage of the approved amounts. So your 20% your isn't based on the claim before it goes through insurance, it's after. Yes, over here. So the question is related to oxygen sterile medical equipment, right? Are you, it is. Under, yeah. So those those tanks come from your durable medical. So you're under HAP and. So could I ask uh, what kind that the HAP rep representative, could I ask that maybe you follow up directly with this, with these folks uh, before they leave? Would that be okay? I'm here all day. So I think what we can do, Jess, is if you have specific benefit questions, uh, such as how durable medical equipment will be handled, uh, I think you can get the most direct answer by speaking to one of our carrier representatives who are here today to answer your benefit specific questions. Um, we have at the, the table over here in the front corner, we have representatives from both Blue Cross and HAP and Humana all here to help answer questions for, again, benefit specific questions. We got HAP Senior Plus. That's correct. We only have one car. Yes, sir. So HAP Senior Plus is the with HAP, and it'll be as it is today, where you'll have one card for your medical and your prescriptions with HAP, and if you're with Blue, then you'll have your prescriptions will run through Humana, and the medical will run through Blue. Medicare is under this card. It is, yes. You won't need a, a Medicare card, you'll just need the HAP card. And in the Blue Cross case, it'll be just the, the Blue or the Humana card, depending on if you're getting drugs or medical services. Is that 
that one that we should maybe have follow up with Jess? I think I think we need to follow up uh, in, individually with that one because it's a unique situation. Can we do that, uh, sir? So yep. we, we will want to make sure that if if we don't get you an answer here today up front, that we take your information to get you the answer you need. We will. Yeah. That's a great. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, Councilman Bowman, you have a question? Uh, yes, sir. Does physical therapy fall under chiropractic care? Um, no, uh, your chiropractic is going to be separate. Physical therapy it has a, a separate benefit. Um, is it that also, it, yes, there's coverage for that. Um, uh, the reason, the biggest, I'm sorry, the biggest reason that they separate the chiropractic is is for different uh, visit limitations. Uh, basically, the number of visits you can have in a year. Uh, it's separated from the physical therapy, so it has its own uh, line item. Um, real quick, um, I just because I know we have some folks that are time limited. Um, do you have a slide on the healthcare advocates, real quick, and then I'll keep going with questions. Um, just as a reminder, this program starts actually today. It is free of charge to you. It's actually free of charge for the next three years. These are folks that are third-party advocates. They actually work for you. Um, their purpose is for you to be able to call and get assistance with anything related to your health care. So I'll give you a few examples. Open enrollment is going to start shortly. For many of you, you're very happy with the provider that you've had. You like Blue Cross, you like HAP, whichever one, and you're, you're just going to stick with your provider. However, the health care advocate can take you through your information and give you some more personalized information about what your out-of-pocket uh, expenses will look like, as an example, under the new plan. They could also help you, let's say it's April, and um, I'm going to use John and myself as an example. John's my health care advocate. I have a claim that comes back from my doctor that has not been paid, but I'm fairly confident that it's a covered benefit. I call my health care advocate, John, and I explain my situation, and John is able to then look at my plan design and help me to advocate with that provider to get that benefit paid for. So it doesn't just end with the open enrollment process annually. These folks are here for you throughout this transition to make sure that you're able to get the most out of your retiree health care benefit possible. Um, it is no cost to you. I want to be 100% clear. You can call 15 times a day. You can call once. It doesn't matter. It's all free to you. The city is paying for this service. And it is for you and your families to be able to use to answer any question you have. Um, they actually will be able to see your personal data um, and um, be able to see what your healthcare history is and be able to really support you in a way that, candidly, because we don't have access to your healthcare data like that, we can't. Um, but we want to provide that service for you all. Yes, sir. With your power of attorney, yes, sir. I do that for my dad all the time. Yes, sir. Um, uh, go ahead, ma'am. So the question was, for your co-pays for emergency room or urgent care at $90 for emergency, $25 for the urgent care center, if that comes off of your deductible. And the way this will work is that those co-pays, those black dollar co-pays, are before deductible. So you won't have to satisfy your $250 deductible if you go to the urgent care. It's just going to cost you $25. It's not credited towards it, but those $25 will be credited towards the $6,000 overall maximum for the year. Does that help? Before you pay for nothing at all anymore, correct? You'd have to pay. If, if, yes, those are any flat dollar copay will be to you, which you could use.
use your reimbursement account card to pay those copays. It's not strictly tied to your deductible. The funding amount was purely based on the deductible. Oh, sir, go ahead. Yes, um, so, if I have a major surgery, How does that affect my co-pays the rest of the year? If you have a major surgery the first of the year, it, you won't hit your $6,000 limit. You'll, you'll hit your $1,000 co-insurance maximum plus your deductible. You'll hit $1,250. Again, your, the, the remaining balance of that $6,000 can only be met by flat dollar co-pays for drugs, office visits, uh, emergency care, things like that. But you didn't pay seventy three thousand dollars this year, did you? I didn't pay anything. Right. Because I have good health care. Yeah. Well, you, you do it. You still will have good health care. There's just slightly increased out of pocket costs for you. Well maybe I just don't understand that you know, you're telling me I'm gonna pay twelve fifty, but there's a six thousand dollar mark right there. The six thousand dollars is as we explained to the gentleman up front here, it's extremely difficult to reach that number. The the more realistic maximum that you're going to see is twelve fifty for those high ticket items like surgeries. Can, can I use, just for a second, I want to make sure, let's illustrate this. Okay, I'm going to use myself as an example. Um, so I had cancer. So three, three times in a single year, I had to have surgery on my throat. Okay, under this plan, every one of those surgeries, I would pay just the first twelve fifty. That's it. The other two surgeries would be covered. But every time I went back to my amazing oncologist, who's saved my voice, I would have a $10 copay to see Dr. Gardner. Okay? And then the medicine that he has me on every month to make sure that my voice stays intact, I would have a $10 copay on, um, I think, wait, is it 15? Maybe 15. It's a generic, so it's $15. But even with me going as much as I do, um, I don't even come close to that 6000 So for you, I think what would be great is with the healthcare advocate, sir, they can pull up your whole health history for the last year, and they can sit down and take you through and really illustrate for you personally um, what your out-of-pocket max is going to be. To hit that $6,000 is, is, is really, um, I, I will tell you, I, I'm not sure. Uh, that would be a tremendous amount of health care. So, so to change it a little bit, so you have the first surgery, yes. that's at twelve fifty. Well down the road you have a different surgery for something completely different. That's okay. That's another twelve fifty. It is not. It the is way not. that'll work is that you will have already paid your deductible for the year. You will have already met your annual co insurance maximum for the year. Therefore that second procedure would be covered at hundred percent. Thank you for your patience, by the way. So health advocates have been contracted for three years and it will remain at no cost to you for that entire time period. Uh, and then at the end of that three year contract, it will be up to the, the city to decide if it's something that should be extended or not. specific how you kind of source your how you get your medications um, we will uh, want to refer you um, nothing about how you receive your health care changes so it's it's the same providers it's it's the same way that you get your medications today so the question was in the event of a, a mail order specialty medication will there be any changes in how those medications are received and the answer is no You'll still go through the same mail order pharmacy. You'll still receive the same drug that you're receiving today. The only thing that would change would be your flat dollar copay amount that you pay uh, when you have a refund. 
No, that is not my telephone that number. Is that, is the, that is the telephone number to uh, Health Advocate. And that's actually, we can pop that screen up there now. Um, so, no, you. Uh, so the healthcare advocate, um, we will have some information. Um, it's up here, but we will also provide you um, some. I, I think the question is, can we send you a card? We'll, we'll figure out something to send along for at least the refrigerator, um, so you have that number wherever. How's that work? Okay. Well, I'm going to write. I'm going to ask Eileen to write it down for me, so we put that on the list. Uh, so, go ahead, sir. I don't know if you can answer this, but. between HAP and Blue Cross. I mean, it seems like through the years, HAP was, there were certain advantages for me to have HAP. Probably had to do with money. But now that this is all changing, how, how do I determine which is better to me, or are they now both sort of equal in what it would cost us and our, and our benefits? The way the, the question was, how do we determine as, as individuals which plan is, is going to be right for us, if I'm understanding it correctly, whether it be Blue Cross or, or HAP, and, and which one is going to be better for your given situations? Well, yes, but I just wondered if these changes sort of, maybe, so the, this, maybe the disparity is just in my mind, but are, are they sort of equal choices now, the, or can't you? The benefit levels themselves are as equivalent as, as we can make them. Uh, within the, the confines of, of the different carriers. Uh, as you saw on the benefit comparison slide uh, and in your packet, right. the real, the, the biggest difference is that chiropractic copay. Uh, everything else is as close as, as possible to matching, whether you're with HAP or with Blue Cross. So it's really going to be looking at your individual providers that you utilize, your doctors themselves, your hospital system that you prefer, uh, and doing a kind of a looking at the network. If, if you are planning on living in, in the area, um, you're, you'll have no, no issues with either the HMO or the PPO. If you decided that you were going to move to Florida, I would tell you you should probably take the PPO option with Blue Cross, uh, as you're gonna have a lot more in-network options down there with the PPO. Yeah. So I think that would also be a great question with the healthcare advocate. They could absolutely help you do that analysis because they could look at your personal data and really figure out what makes the most sense for you and your family. Can we use a PPO in conjunction with these programs? Like oh. Aetna? Oh. Do you, the question was can you use another insurance in conjunction with this uh, as, say, a coordinated benefit? Yes, sir. Do you have a second insurance? That you're no, holding? I don't now, but I'm looking into it. It's, uh, we, yeah, it's we, Medicare uh, Aetna. So with Medicare Advantage plans such as these, you can't be enrolled in more than one, meaning if you choose one of these options, it would preclude you from enrolling in another. Okay. So instead question. of instead Thank of your your example there at or you yeah. say you've been looking care, into them, you could choose either Blue Cross or HAP with the city, uh, or decline coverage with the city completely and enroll in one of those. Okay. You did, you said it right. The question was, if you're not making any changes to the way you enroll today, you're in HAP, you choose to stay in HAP, do you need to call Health Advocate? Uh, no, you don't need to. If you have any specific questions you'd like to help them uh, have you get answers for you, then, then great, go ahead and give them a call and they'll help you there. 
but uh, if you're not planning to make a, an election change, you still want to stay with App, and that's where you are today, then then really there's there's not going to be an action for you. You'll you'll be your benefits will just shift to these levels, and uh, that's that's really all you're.
to the point that uh, council also supported that um, with uh, language that really demonstrates that there is no intention to change those benefits. Um, th those are two pieces, um, and, and believe me, I worked for 20 years almost for the state of Michigan, so I know intention is not always uh, something that matters with government. Um, so, but I do want to make that commitment. Uh, the second is that um, we do have language in, in some of the labor contracts that are starting to move through. I will call attention to the Police Officers um, Association of Michigan, the POAM contract that was uh, just uh, ratified and approved. Um, there is actually language in the labor contract now that specifically indicates that there will be no further changes to retiree health care unless there is a financial reason and those financial reasons are actually determined by the criteria listed in state law. So I, I would hope that between the council's language, the mayor's very clear and repeated assertions, and then again, our willingness to start putting it into labor contracts, that you'll see the commitment here is, is really not to make any further changes. The goal, as the mayor has said from the outset, is to ensure that the retiree health care benefits that were promised, we can actually afford for everyone. Um, and and um, for more information on that, all of those um, details are out on the website. Um, we spent 13 budget presentations going through a lot of that, so I won't, I won't bore you with those details. The first question uh, the councilman asked was, um, and pardon me, sir, I, there's no way my father will let me call you again. <laughs> um, so the first question the councilman asked was, uh, was related to what happens in that third year. Um, so um, that HRA cards, uh, again, we said we're gonna preload those in two years for the deductible for you folks to use. As we discussed with, with uh, many of you, if you don't use all that money, it's yours to keep and to continue to use uh, based on your own personal uh, choices. Um, there's no way to recoup that. Um, in that third year, um, the goal is to provide at least 50% uh, of the uh, deductible into perpetuity for all of you. And we chose the reimbursement methodology for a few reasons. Um, and we are open to continuing to discuss that that's the best way to, uh, to implement the programs. Part of the reason why we give ourselves a, a couple of years to get it right. Um, and based on use and experience, Honestly, um, it's gonna be, that's the amount. It's really just how we're gonna distribute it right now. It's the idea of reimbursement. But to your point, sir, if we find out that there's a better way to do it, we'll, we'll make those changes. My question is, is there an account already set up for that third year, or is that something that's going to have to be discussed budget-wise and brought to council for approval? Um, not to speak on behalf of the mayor, the intention though is to provide that money um, at the same time that we request the funds for the two years, the mayor's intention was to put um, at least that next year into that one-time funding account, um, but not to speak on his behalf, sir. Uh, let me go over here and then over here. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Getting back to the HRA account. Yes. It was mentioned about submitting your documentation for whatever you get paid in that third year. Yes, And Cap and probably Blue Cross are expecting that you will be Sometimes you don't get until that next month. So is that a timely enough? Yes.
and that timeliness is, is fine. It's not going to cause a problem. The, the cards themselves are set up in such a way that if you use the card for a qualified expense, say paying a doctor in the doctor's office, the, the paid E, the, the, the doctor being paid that, the way that it's coded, it'll, it'll be allowed. You'll, you'll be able to use the card to just pay on the site. You won't have to take a bill, send in documentation to be able to use the card to pay. You'll just be able to. Now, if you try to take it and go and fill the car up with gas, that's a different story. Um, that's not going to work. But, you, and then as we get to that third year and you're required to submit uh, evidence of, of what you paid out of pocket to be reimbursed from that $125, that'll be, that'll be different. You'll need the EOB at that point. So it'll, it'll, it'll take you a little bit of time to get your, your money back. But you'll submit the EOB to the city and they will reimburse you the funds. That's, that's the intention right now, in the third year. Let's say, um, under the current plan, with that, or Blue Cross, either one, you go to a, your primary document and you find something that requires you to be in a certain and it's done in this year, under what we have now. But, you have the surgery, and then you have to continue to follow it So we have an example that we have a surgery before the end of this calendar year that requires follow-up visits and care into next year. The, the surgery itself that was incurred under this current plan that you have this year would be paid based on that schedule of benefits. The follow-up care that trailed into next year would you would pay based on the new schedule of benefits. So your your office visit follow up would be a ten dollar copay. Uh, any prescribed medications uh, for maintenance would fall under the new prescription drug copays. But the, the surgery itself that occurred in this year would be covered as as the coverage currently exists in twenty twenty. So, John, I think if we can take maybe just a couple more questions because I do want you all to have an opportunity to talk to our representatives here um, if, you, if you have specific questions. So, yes, ma'am. Okay, so uh, the question is uh, related to healthcare advocates. Are they um, individuals with medical training or are they individuals that are really focused on billing? Um, so the answer to your question is these folks receive training um, to be able to work through your specific benefit plan and try to understand your procedures. Um, uh, they're not doctors and nurses, but neither would I classify them as clerical. I would classify them a little bit closer to like a care manager or a care advocate. Similar to, similar to how a care manager would help to guide you through the, the process of seeking the right provider, finding the right facility for your procedure to be done, explaining the way that your coverage will be uh, applied to your bills. Uh, that's, that's what these people are really there for. So if, if you call in with a benefit specific question, they have the full description of the plan and are going to be able to review your particular example, whichever, whatever the case may be, a surgery, a doctor's visit, any of those. And they'll look at the way that the plan functions and tell you how you should experience that. Yes, they can help you with that process as well. So the question is related to an appeal with the provider? Yes, healthcare and kids can help that. Yes, sir. Do you currently get two cards, sir? Yep, you'll still have those two cards. So that, um, 
So this one, yeah, so this will be the money card. Um, uh, you can request a second card for her. Yeah, we only, um, they sent out one, um, and, but we can get a, you want a second one? Okay, let, let, let us talk to P and and see what the, what the options are for two enrollees. Um, I'll tell you, yeah, my husband and I share this one, um, but yeah, we can, let's talk and see what we can do. I don't, I don't want to make any promises, though. Let me see what we can do. So, she's out of town, I'm out of town, and I'm tired. That's, that's where, um, so, um, I should say, my parents take care of my kids. I have requested a second card for my parents to have. That is an option. Um, you can request cards. Um, but let, let me look into whether we can provide two at the outset. There's nothing else you need to do. Yeah, you'll get one in the mail for three days. Oh, okay. In the back there. She wants to know if the meetings tomorrow are the same as this as today. No, they're the sixty-five. Right? So we have we have two meetings for Medicare plans and two meetings for the pre sixty-five retirees. So you, you'll only need to you only need to attend the, the one that applies to you. Yeah. Question and then Blue Cross and HAP in Humana are going to be back here in the corner for specific questions, and then John and I will be up here as well. Go ahead, sir, please. Yes. The question is related to whether this is considered coordinated benefits for auto accident uh, related plan. Yes. Yes, it'll still be incredible coverage for your auto if you're choosing to, to waive or reduce your, your personal injury level. Uh, there's, it's still a quality, it, the plan is, it still covers the same way other than there's a, a different deductible level it, it, from the standpoint of being qualified care. If, if your doctor accepts your coverage today and you enroll in the, the same option the HMO would have with the PPO in blue, uh, they're, they'll still accept it. It's the same It's the same coverage, there are just different payment levels for you. Yeah, it's so uh, the question, if they're today, if they're under contract with Blue Cross, they're under contract with Blue Cross, if they're under contract with they're under contract with HAP. Right. This is this doesn't change. A that. change in a change in benefit levels such as this doesn't change their contract with Blue Cross to to accept Blue Cross's payments. Okay, folks. So, um, uh, so Eileen um, and HAP. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so um, again, the presentation will be posted on the website. Um, we're going to take the frequently asked questions from here and start compiling the answers to them and post those as well. Um, in the meantime, the providers are there. John and myself are up here. Thank you very much for your patience. We sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. The, the reimbursement account card? No, just the medical card. The medical card.